<clears throat> All right. Well, Rana Gupta is Senior Portfolio Manager, India Equity Specialist at Manual Life Investment Management. He's joining us now to take some questions. Rana, good to have you with us here. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, just want to start with uh, a little bit of, you know, what, what foreigners are doing in India. Uh, so we had the EPFR. They collect data from across funds. Uh, and they've been telling us, uh, you know, till before yesterday uh, that uh, India dedicated funds have been receiving a lot of money even as global emerging market funds have been tepid. Yesterday, when we spoke with them, they said, well, things have slowed down. Uh, India-specific funds still positive. Uh, GEM funds now negative. Is, uh, you know, the tap kind of uh, not turning off, but is it slowing down uh, in terms of flows? Just wanted to understand what the view is. So I think the flow towards the emerging markets uh, are on a strong footing. And I think what you rightly pointed out within emerging markets, if we talk about global emerging markets, emerging markets, uh, China is a big portion. So therefore, there are some investors who are taking a view that China will be growing a lot slower than the other emerging markets, and therefore allocate money to the emerging markets, uh, you know, directly. In India is one example. So we do think this uh, flows are on a pretty strong footing. There will be you know ups and downs in terms of you know, momentum swing up and down, but overall, I think emerging markets particularly the ones which has pretty strong growth rates, a good fiscal and good current account, uh, will see, I think, uh, good inflows over next uh, few years. The inflows, Rana, have been pretty strong in the Indian markets up until now. Within the emerging market basket, does India continue to remain your preferred picks? pick or are you a bit cautious now given the run-up that we've seen? So I think the overall the markets might consolidate between this 19,000, 20,000 range or thereabouts. But I think overall longer term optimism remains. That's point number one. But point number two is that I think beyond the headline Nifty level, which compromise, comprises of so many you know external and internal sectors, I think the real story is the domestic Indian market. I think if you look at some of the themes that we've been highlighting, whether it's digital, whether it is manufacturing or transition to clean energy, premiumization of consumption, overall deficit reduction, therefore inflows into banks, insurance, real estate. Those themes, I think, will continue to attract quite a bit of attention going forward. Mm. Hi, Rana. Good morning. Uh, what are you expecting from Fed Chair? Uh, you know, he speaks tomorrow. And uh, what are you factoring in, in terms of rate hikes? You know, everyone thought we were done with the last rate hike. Now, some part believes that maybe we have one more in the offering. And more importantly, that rate cut that people were talking about now that looks like it's pushed back further into 2024. What's your uh, your estimates? I think uh, there, you know, we are at in US states. We're talking about we are five and a half. It can go up by 25 basis points. May or may not. We don't. I, I you know. I'm not even making a comment on that. But I think given the inflation trajectory, it looks unlikely. The base rate will be a base case will be a pause. But we will see about that. Uh, what uh, the Fed is going to say in Jackson Hole, I think, is anyone's anyone's guess. But I guess. You know, his commentary has been on the lines of that inflation is perhaps moderating. We have to be cautious, wait and see, not jump the gun. You're right. And we also think that the rate cut is pushed out because uh, of the inflation still remaining higher than the Fed target. But we do spend a lot of time on the monetary policy. But I think I want to ha highlight one point, if I may. I think the rates have been higher for some time and the markets keep on rallying. This has confounded many. But the point is, uh, the changes that we have seen seen in U.S. fiscal and industrial policy is something I think we should spend some more time about, because the U.S. incentives that is given in whether it's chip manufacturing uh, or electric vehicle manufacturing within the U.S. borders, uh, I think are pretty significant, and that is what keeping the industrial part of the market alive. So, you know, coming to India, like for example, India also there are PLIs, right? We are seeing similar kind of policies across many markets where the government is giving subsidies to build up the industrial chain. So I think that is one of the more paradigm shift that is taking place. Monetary policy is important, but I think some of these points also need to be considered. Okay, so then uh, you want to wind down by telling us what is the, uh, you know, what is your pecking order looking like now between emerging and developed markets for the rest of the year? And in general, what is your advice to investors? Given the kind of run-up that we've seen, does it make sense to take a little bit of uh, you know, book a little bit of cash or continue to invest specifically in markets like India? So I won't be able to come out of developed market because that's frankly not my you know, true forte. But what I can share is that, you know, I just mentioned in the answer to the last question that 
monetary policy is becoming, uh, you know, the rates are becoming higher. So if you're in emerging markets and then your market in a, in a macro has a lot of external debt in US dollar or your companies have a lot of US dollar debt, then that's something to be concerned about. On the other hand, if your country sector or the, or the, or the stocks or the companies are linked to the positive coming out of US fiscal policy, for example, the US needs to source more and they will not, uh, they will reduce dependence on China. So where do they go? If your if you if you if your country the market or the stocks are exposed to those themes, I think those markets can do very well. On the top of it, if there are if within the country there are reforms that have happened which makes productivity go higher, I think that's just the cherry on the top. So I think those markets and India for, falls into the falls into that bracket. I think uh, the longer term outlook remains very bullish. But again, themes one have to select. And like I mentioned, I will reiterate it one more time. I think within India we like digital. We like manufacturing, we like clean tech, we like premiumization of consumption. We also like the deficit reduction theme, which is, you know, so therefore the world savings increasing in the in the country. No, those are good points, Ranath. Uh, absolutely. I mean, actually, we don't talk uh, very much about it. Even stuff, stuff like, uh, you know, manufacture, make in, uh, make in India or electronics manufacturing in India, right? The PLI schemes, etc. We look for stocks which will benefit because of that, but there is an interest rate aspect to it, right? Because the current that electronics, for example, is the second largest import component for India, and if you're able to kind of uh, make a lot of that here, uh, that's a direct impact on uh, current account deficit. That has got imp implications for interest rates, lowering interest rates generally over a period of time, and uh, you know that's quite helpful in the environment that you're describing, which is generally high rates in the developed world uh, to be able to compete for flows. Uh, so. Uh, yeah, lots to talk about. We'll pick up on uh, some of this, uh, uh, you know, next time we are on. Thanks very much, Rana. Appreciate you joining in here yeah, on sure. CNBC TV 18. Thank you.